Morning. 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 We certainly are blessed as a people. And uh, I'm not just talking about our country. I think that we probably do have the greatest country in the world. Uh, I've seen some countries, uh, you've probably been around, some of you have seen some different companies, but I've never found one that could match up to our country. That is a blessing for sure. We have many blessings as Christians. We have a God that loves us so much that he gave his only son that we could have life eternal. He gave us the Bible. The Bible contains everything that we need to know to be able to stand righteous before God. And I'll tell you, without God, we cannot stand righteous on our own. It's not possible. The Bible means so many different things to us. Uh, we are all familiar with certain characters and events that have happened in the Bible that's recorded in the Bible. We sing songs as children in Vacation Bible School on the Joy Bus of the different events and, and characters that have been a part of our lives if we've been in the church all of our lives. I want to go over a few of them. We've got a character in mind that we're going to talk about today. But just to give you an idea of all the things that we could have picked from, the very beginning, the creation of Adam and Eve. Wonderful, wonderful place. What a wonderful time. It was created for man, and it was perfect. Everything was perfect. And then one of the darkest days in the world came when sin came into being, into this world. We had a teacher that God sent to Nineveh. His name was Jonah. Jonah wasn't happy about going because he thought that Nineveh did not deserve and could not be converted even if, even if he did go. So on the way there, on the boat, there was a storm, and Noah confessed to the crew that it was because of what he had done that he was thrown overboard and swallowed by a big fish and spit out. So Jonah got the message, didn't he, that he needed to do what God told him to do. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refusing to bow to the king's image and was thrown into the fiery furnace. And God was with him, sent an angel. And when they came out, they didn't even smell like smoke. Daniel in the lion's den, faithful to God. But also there was Lot's wife when they were told to get out because God was going to destroy the city. An angel told her not to look back, and she did. And God turned her into a pillar of salt. Moses leading the children out of Israel, or out of Egypt. Our character is going to come from this story it's one that you might not think of and not one that a name would come to your mind when we talked about the Israelites leaving Egypt. We know after the 10 plagues, Moses led the exodus of the Israelites out of Egypt and across the Red Sea. And after they wandered in the wilderness for a while, they based themselves at the base of Mount Sinai and that's where Moses received the Ten Commandments. During that time, while Moses was on the mountain, the people began to stir and murmur about their situation and what was going on 
they were not happy with, and they convinced Aaron to build a golden calf that they may worship the golden calf while Moses was away. And when they did that, God was very displeased with them and had Moses or had Aaron uh, pound the calf into dust and made the people drink it and became very ill. And it was at this time that God talked to Moses and said, Moses, I want you to send 12 spies into the land of Canaan. And this is a land that God was going to give them. And they were to uh, uh, traverse the land up and down, checking out uh, the people, uh, the cities, what kind of security they had, things like that, and just to see what kind of land it was. And they was gone for 40 days. And when they came back, the 12 spies give this report. It was both good news and bad news. A land of milk and honey, as evidenced by the fruit that they brought back. They brought back some grapes from that land that they had to carry. Two men had to put a stick through it, and two men had to carry it. That's how bountiful that their land was. They told him, they said, Numbers 13 and 27, then they told him and said, we went to the land where you sent us. It truly flows with milk, and this is the fruit they're from. But there was 10 spies that give a negative report. They said this in verse 28, Nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong. The cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there. Anak was a Hebrew word for giants, and they were very big, strong people. And the people begin to murmur about the chances of them not being able to take it forgetting that God was on their side. And so far, God had led them through all this time. And that now that they were at the border of Canaan and ready to take it, they begin to murmur. And one of the, uh, the spy, Caleb, said this. Then Caleb uh, quieted the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and take possession for we are well able to overcome it. But the people begin to murmur and say that we are not able to go against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land which they had spied out, saying the land though, uh, which we, through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours the, its inhabitants and all people whom we saw in it are men of great stature. So the people, it got worse and worse as they went along and become fearful. And they was ready to stone Caleb and Joshua and, and to select a new leader to lead them back to Egypt. So this in turn, as it got worse and worse, God was very displeased with the people. And he brought uh, together uh, those that had gone over to spy, and 10 of them were killed. The two that brought the good report, saying that it was true that they w did have well-fortified cities. There was giants there, very big, strong men, uh, that they would have to fight against, but they forgot about God being on their side, that God was with them and had been all this time. So uh, as, they, uh, uh, as God uh, came to Moses, he began to say, this is what your punishment's going to be. You'll not be able to enter into Canaan. You're going to be 
wandering in the desert for 40 years, and your carcasses will lay in the sand in the desert instead of getting to come to this land. But he did say this about Caleb. He says, what about my servant Caleb? The Lord spared Caleb because he had followed me fully. He said he had a spirit of a different kind, and that was a believing spirit in his God. He was faithful to his God, and he uh, for, never flinched when it came to telling the people that they were going to be able uh, to take uh, that uh, land. And here's what God said. He said, I am giving the land on which he walked, that is Caleb, because he wholly f uh, followed the Lord. He wholly followed the Lord in all things. In verse 14, it says that Hebron therefore became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, because he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. What a wonderful epitaph that would be for your stone. He wholly followed the Lord. What does it mean to wholly follow the Lord for us? You know, we as Christians have that same charge, don't we? We have that same charge that Caleb had. And we need to have that faith, that same desire to serve God and that same feeling to know that God is with us and there's nothing that we can't do. We know that Caleb followed the Lord in the wilderness when there was hard times, when food was scarce, but God always provided. He always took care of them. We have some other examples too of, we talked about Lot's wife turning back uh, and became a pillar of salt because she went against what God told her. And also Paul talks about the Galatians that were bewitched in Galatians, uh, the third chapter beginning with the first verse. O foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified? So one of us who follow Jesus today, uh, how about the youth? What does Jesus say about the youth? Uh, let no one despise your youth, but be an example to the believers in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Remember, Paul wrote these letters to Timothy, and he counted Timothy as a son, didn't he? He loved Timothy very much. And he wanted Timothy to understand how important it was for him to serve God in all matters and believe in his word as he teaches and have these kind of things. How about when we're old? I mean, uh, most of us, uh, we could be counted as aged, couldn't we? We could be counted as, as old. What does Paul say in uh, uh, Titus 2, 1 and 5? But as for you, speak the things which are proper for sound doctrine. Now he's talking to the older people. That the older men be sober, be reverent, be temperate, sound in faith, in love, in patience. The older women likewise, that they be reverent in behavior, not slanderers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they admonish the young women to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, homemakers, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God may not be blasphemed. The book of Psalms, the 92nd chapter, the 12th to the 15th verse says this, the righteous shall flurry like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those who are planted in the houses of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall bear fruit in old age. They shall be fresh and flourishing to declare that the Lord is upright. 
He is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. Some great examples, isn't it, for us to look at, to measure up to, to ask ourselves, are we like Caleb? Are we of a different spirit? Are we wholly following God in the way that he wants to be followed? To follow Jesus uh, with all our heart, I think it's very important uh, that we spend time in the Word. You know, in order for us to know about God and what God wants for us, we have to know what He says in His Word. We know that there was a time uh, we have a perfect role uh, for that, and of course that was Jesus. And He was speaking to the Pharisees and they was trying to trip him up and cause him trouble. And among the Pharisees, there was this lawyer that asked Jesus, not because he wanted to know what the answer was, but to test him and try to trick him into saying something that would uh, make him look bad. In Matthew, the 22nd chapter, the 36th through the 38th verse says this, Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and the great commandment. Sadly, we know that there are many that try to serve the Lord with a divided heart, that we cling to things that God warns us about. We cling to things of the world and try to fit those things in with our, uh, with our uh, religion, with our Christianity. First Kings 11 and 4 says this, For it was so when Solomon was old that his wives turned his heart after other gods, and his heart was not loyal to, Lord, to the Lord his God, as was the heart of his father David. Now we know that Solomon loved God, he was the, the son of David, and he's the one that asked for wisdom when God gave him a chance to uh, ask for something from him. And so God gave him wisdom, and he was acclaimed for that for a long, long time. But it says as he got old, his heart was changed. Someone changed his mind, and he began to worship those idols that his foreign wives had brought with them. Sadly, we think that those kind of things maybe couldn't happen to us, but they can, can't they, even after we are old, that we can be influenced to go a different direction. In the epistle of James, we find in chapter 4, verse 4, adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. What of us today that follow Jesus? Are we going to follow him with all of our hearts and with all of our minds? John 14, 15 says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. So we need to follow our Savior with undivided affection. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. First John 2, 15 and 17, through 17. So again, we ask ourselves the question, are we going to follow our God with all our hearts, with all our might? 
like Caleb followed the Lord despite the dangers that confronted him. He was willing to face those giants that the other ten talked about. There we saw the giants, and we were like grasshoppers in our own sight, and so we were in their sight. Remember what Caleb said that his thought was that if Jesus was with us, that we could conquer them. He was willing, even in his old age, Joshua 14, 10. And now behold, this is when Caleb has already taken his inheritance in that land and is now 85 years old. And now behold, the Lord has kept me alive as these 45 years ever since the Lord spoke the word to Moses while Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now here I am this day, 85 years old, as yet I am as strong this day as on the day that Moses sent me. Just as my strength was then, so now is my strength for war, both for going out and for coming in. Now therefore give me this mountain of which the Lord spoke of in that day, for you heard in that day how the Anakin were there, and that the cities were great and fortified. It may be the Lord will be with me, and I shall be able to drive them out, as the Lord said. So here Caleb is saying that I'm 85 years old, and God has kept me as strong as, and I know that we can conquer this last battle for this land. And he was willing uh, to do that. He offered to do that. I think that we have to be awfully careful about when we get older, when we think that there's nothing that we can do, because there is things we can do. You have to set your mind to doing it. And there's a lot of opportunity in Pittsfield for people our age to show others that the God loves them and that they need their son Jesus Christ in their life. Remember when the Apostle Paul was confronted by the maiden when Jesus Christ was being crucified, being on trial, and she pointed him out as one of the people that was with Jesus. And it's really disheartening when you think about Peter that Jesus loved so much and often said so, and that he had been with him the whole time, that he was teaching and preaching the word, but yet from fear, from total fear, he denied the Savior and made statements of not knowing him, not even knowing him. Of course, Peter afterwards was very repentant and very sorry for that. But still, we can be like Peter, can't we? In, in some of the uh, silliest places where we'll deny being a Christian. Uh, I don't know how you feel about uh, being a Christian. Uh, are you embarrassed to tell other people? Uh, are you embarrassed to uh, have a Bible in plain sight in your home? Uh, it's not that we don't care and that we don't love God, but we are not able to overcome the fear of people thinking something about us because we're a Christian. And that is what God is, uh, uh, talks about so many places here about uh, how we need to stand and stand firm. In the uh, fifth chapter of Matthew, uh, where the uh, Beatitudes are the very last one, it says, Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile you and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. 
So we have to ask this uh, question. Shall we follow Jesus like Caleb followed Jesus? Are we keeping our eye on him? Does our faith grow as we know that Jesus is with us and loves us? We want to make sure, too, that our eye is always on the Lord. Hebrews, the 12th chapter, beginning with the first verse, says this. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for joy that we set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. You have not yet resisted to bloodshed, striving against sin. Looking to our Savior as our author and finisher of our faith. I hope that we have that different spirit. I hope people could say that about us. There's something about different about your spirit and the way you uh, uh, handle your Christianity, like Caleb did, like believing in God and God can help them through any situation. Have that different spirit that Caleb's got. I hope we can say that. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. And we have to believe that, don't we? I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. I can face all things that comes to me in this world. Not because I'm strong, but because I know that God is with us. And no matter what, in the end, if we stay faithful, we have eternal life that will not include any of those things that hurts us or makes us sad or causes us to cry because he loves us so much and he's prepared a place for us. Ephesians 6.10, and this will be our final scripture. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his mind, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all you can stand. I hope that this kind of lesson is a motivator to you and gives you strength and gives you a sense of uh, well-being, even though things may not be well with you we can still have a feeling of well-being when we lean on our God, when we count on our God to be faithful. We know that God will be faithful. We have to ask ourselves, are we going to be faithful to God? I didn't tell the truth about the scriptures. I want to read one more. Ephesians, the third chapter, the 19th to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. And brother, I believe that, brothers and sisters, I believe that's, that's where we need to be. Not counting on ourselves for anything, but leaning on the power of God to carry us through. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And I believe that he died for our sins. And I believe that when we're baptized, that 
everything that we've ever done or said that is contrary to God's will will be wiped away clean. And still his blood washes our sins away day after day after day. But we have to stand for God. We have to be like Caleb. We have to have a special spirit, a spirit that is different than we see in the world. We have to have a desire to serve God and to want to be a part of his church. And I hope that today that if you have something that is weighing on your mind that we can help you with with prayer. Or if you're not a Christian and you would desire to be baptized and put Christ on in baptism and be added to the church by Jesus, the Son of God, then we give you that opportunity also to, today as we stand and sing the song that's been selected. <laughs> 